Ah ja. Eu. Rando. Listen. Engage. Kasafti. Henry Fioli. Represent. Um, a lot and, and we always get asked about funding ideas and, and about writing applications um, and in this presentation there's there's a bit for those affiliated clubs but also for uh, social running groups uh, as well so I've tried to incorporate the two because there is, is some difference um, which we'll get into as we go along. Um, so is it going to move? Yes. OK, so what we're going to look at is uh, why might a group need uh, funding, completing a development plan, which is more specific to uh, affiliated clubs. But also, I think there could be an element of that that is useful for, for social running groups. Um, looking at fundraising ideas, um, potential grants available, um, how to write a good application and also some links and resources um, and I actually have a document with, with quite a lot of grants um, available that um, I can share with you all afterwards there's about four pages of different grants some are, are national grants some are sort of local to different areas and, and we'll find that as we go along okay so why might a group need funding so as mentioned it might be about coach education so if we need more people to train as a left as your groups expand if, if that's um, something your group wants to do obviously you need to have more lefts per um, for participants um, or if you want to upskill to, to the curve the coaching running fitness so when those become available um, and so also safeguarding and first aid that, that we were mentioning in the previous presentation. So coach education is one of the easiest things to get funded from, from um, most applications um, because it's all about the, the development of the group and club, um, development of support to, to your community as well. Um, also looking at it might be some equipment, so cones that you use, high vis vest. So I mentioned before, I always have a bag of high vis vest because no doubt someone will turn up one night without one, and and I just have some available because to me that that's better than them not running in a high vis. Um, it might be that your your group or your club has a base. Um, and so to have uh, equipment or event equipment and set up that, that you need to pay for as well. Um, so just a question to you guys, really, what, what other expenses does your, your group or club have? One of the expenses we might have uh, ever in the future is access to uh, what was public land. Um, schools, uh, in certainly where we are in Denby. Um, uh, I had this this weekend, uh, a company that now looks after Denbyshire Leisure won't let us use the land because they want to charge, apparently. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is a shame. Cause... Yeah, so any speed work or stuff like that we want to do on grass, whether it's with kids or uh, adults. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. is it? Is that because it's connected to the leisure centre that? Is that, is that um, what they're saying? Apparently, yeah. Oh, oh, that is a shame. Yeah, because um, 
previously uh, Denby Harriers um, train on. It's a lovely field and it's got a nice um, little track. It's, it's not a, a full track as in a, an athletics track, but it's a lovely grass marked track. Um, so that that is a shame. So I'll have a I'll have a conversation with you afterwards um, about that. And, and, oh, that is a shame. Okay. Um, any other expenses? What do other groups and clubs have to pay for? Okay. Uh, so, what I've always tried to encourage um, my clubs to do, certainly. So, uh, with my Welsh athletics hat on, so I work with, with uh, running clubs and affiliated track and field clubs. And what's good to have is to have a development plan in place so thinking about right over the next six 12 months this is what's going to happen we need this many run leaders or we want an event to happen so put in a plan in place so it helps by making sure that we we forward plan in terms of closing dates so you'll see on on the list of grants of um, there are closing dates for the funds but also there are grants that come out at, at a particular time so, for example, Welsh Athletics, we have um, a development grant that comes out in February and it's quite a short window of application. So, but if you know that it comes out in February, you can pre-plan for that and, and you, you know, you've got all that information ready. Um, if it's a, a grant that comes from Sport Wales, well, you know, the more information that you have to hand and the more information that you put in the application, the better. And sometimes that it may take time uh, to get information from other people or to get quotes for, for cost of equipment or, or quotes for uh, courses as well and make sure that those courses are put in place. So by having that plan in place, that helps for the, for the future. So I'm just going to move on a second. So um, within this development plan, so for affiliated clubs, we have what's called a clubs portal. And as part of the portal, we have a development plan. And this is a series of questions that the club is asked um, to check what they already have in place. And then it, it gives a, a snapshot, it gives a review at the end of it. Um, and I actually think that this could be something that is useful for social running groups as well, not as in much detail, but by having a plan about what, where do you want the group to go forward? Um, and that could fit into some of the other things that we've been talking about in terms of, you know, is, do you want to develop your communications, for example? Is there anyone in the club that, that is great at communications and can take over that side of, of things for you? Um, but if we actually have a look at the development plan, so has the club identified what its purpose is, um, what are its core values and how you communicate those to its members? Um, have you got a written list of objectives for future years? So that development plan. And it might be actually you don't want the group to get any bigger. You want to keep it as it is. And, and that's absolutely fine. But there might be things that you need to update in, in terms of training and coach education. So you, you could still include those elements. Um, uh, yeah, do we have a, a succession plan for encouraging and training future members? So if a run leader steps down, for example, where are you going to recruit the next person from? Um, what else picks out? So um, have you got a, a long term plan? So maybe for over five years. OK, so. That's something that that is on the club's portal. And as I say, you know, if, if social running groups feel that a, a simplified version of that might be useful, then then we can put that together. Now I'm going to see if my technology works. Yep, able to go backwards. <laughs> um, so why it's important is identifying what's needed and how it benefits the, the groups and clubs. And, and as I say, you know, if you give time to this, then hopefully your, your actual application will, will be better and create and have more detail in it, which goes a long way in terms of when people are reviewing the funding. Sometimes, um, so I sit on um, what was the, um, oh, I can't even think what it's called now. 
is now the Be Active Fund, uh, in terms of, of Sport Wales. Uh, I can't think of what it's called before. It's so long since I've done it. Um, but we, we would sit and, and review the applications to receive funding. And sometimes there just wasn't enough detail in it. And then you'd have to go back and ask them things, or they're just not putting enough there. Um, and one of the things that, that we like to see is, is demonstration that the club and the, the group is developing and modernizing as we go along. Okay, any questions about, about that so far? We're happy. Okay, so shown that already. Okay, so before you look at uh, applying for grants, is there anything else that, that you could do? So this could be um, a lot of ideas for, for social running groups who, who perhaps can't access th those grants, and I'll, I'll go into that into a second. But um, can you charge for a beginner's course, for example? So if you've got a 10 weeks beginner's course, can you charge £10 per person for that 10 weeks. So that works out at, at £1 a week, which I think is a bargain. But then that money can be reinvested and pay for another run leader in, in the future. Um, so all you'd need is, is, is a bank account. There's a, there's a lot of banks that do a community account where you just need two signatories, obviously making sure that you you have that trust within your group, that those signatories are, are just going to have uh, that money for the group so so I would put something in place there um, but yeah it, it, it's pretty straightforward I think one pound a week for a beginner's course is is something that that's achievable I, I've done it previously um, when I set up for various runners um, I set it up as part of Run Wales but I wanted other people to take it on um, we charged ten pounds for a beginner session. We paid for two new leaders, and they've taken it on, and it, it's it just exploded. Really, <laughs> they've really built on that. Um, another fundraising idea, um, and something uh, that that's good in in terms of recycling, but raising money by asking for for kit donations. So that could be from the the wider community, not just from your group, but then reselling. Obviously, being aware of, of COVID regulations at, at the minute, but you know, as, as that starts to lift, you might have more success. And um, th they seem to do pretty well on, on like the Facebook marketplaces and, and things like that, where you, you don't then have to pay for an advert and pay fees and things like that. Um, can you fundraise by holding an event? Um, so a lot of groups have been doing virtual events recently so how can you use that to, to help you raise some money towards the, the club um well can you get a sponsor for example you know they advertise on on your t-shirts um i've done that for my junior club before not for my my running club but um has anybody else got any fundraising ideas that, that they've done in in their group or their, their club I think I've tied you all out this afternoon. <laughs> no, well, what we've done is for our virtual events, we've uh, we've got some creative people who've been able to do things like small uh, handmade medals. Uh, and then obviously uh, we've said if anyone wants to participate in the virtual event and wants that medal, then they pay a small contribution and that's helped us get some income in. And we've actually been able to use some of our members to create things like glasses and uh, that people have been able to have, so like tumblers. Um, and that's been a really good way of, uh, of kind of getting money into the club, using the creativity of people in the club. Yeah, that's great. That's a great idea. Um, uh, medals can be expensive. So yeah, any sort of contribution towards them is great. And people like medals. Got to have medal Monday, don't we? <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is um, the area that um, I want to look at more about before applying for grants. So a lot of grants and funds require your group or club to have an, a committee. So it's really important that you check the criteria for, for that grant or fund. Um, so previously, it, community test it was um, previous to the Be Active Fund. So previously on community test, you didn't have to have a committee. Um, and I've applied on, on behalf of Real Runners and it, it's paid for two leaders. 
with the the active fund now with sport wales it, it has to be come from a, a club it has to to have a committee um so so just check those details uh, um and it, it will say quite straightforward um it, it will say whether you have to have a, a committee on board um i think it, it is something that that we need to look into a bit more on my run wales side a bit how do we support people who want to start a new group um, or develop their group how can we we look for funds and grants that actually help them without the need for a committee um, so that, that, that's a piece of work that, that I'll do after this. Um, as I say, you'll need to have a bank account. Obviously, if you're an affiliated club, you, you'll already have a bank account and a treasurer. Um, if you're a social running group, the community accounts are, are really, really useful to, to set and they're quite easy to set up. But again, you know, if you're just applying for a grant the first time, it takes a little while to get that account going. So just back the, that into your plan. And that's where having a development plan is so useful because you can factor that time in. Okay. Um, so potential grants available, I've already uh, mentioned a couple of those, but there are lots and lots of local grants that will be around you. So for example, um, up here on the north, we have um, the wind farms. So there are a number of wind farm funds that we can access. Um, so those are all off the coast, the wind farms themselves, but that the company operates in. Um, so we have uh, Flintshire and Denbyshire and then Conway and Gwyneth. Um, so there might be different um, locations for them. And then we've got other grants that are available from external companies. So we, we have uh, Welsh Water who look after Llynbrenig. Um, there's uh, a a grant round near them so for people that are local to them so that that's for the community um, also local rotary groups also um, get in contact with your local authority contact and um, so your sports development departments because they very often have lots of information about uh, potential grants available in your local area has anyone got any examples of, of any local funds to them Yeah. It's really amazing how how many little grants are out there. On a sorry, national, uh, uh, sorry, Anna, sorry. Uh, yeah. is, is that, does that include the what was called the community chest? Yeah, so the community chest was replaced by the Be Active Fund. Okay. So we haven't had the community chest meetings for over twelve months now. Um, I'm not sure just as yet what will happen um, in the future with the Be Active Fund, whether we'll go back to those regional meetings um, in terms of community chest or whether it will stay as a, a national fund. But there's different elements to the, the Be Active Fund as, as well. So there, there's an element about um, development. Um, there's an ele element about getting back to into sport uh, post COVID. So for my junior group in Prestatin, we uh, accessed the, the fund to pay for um, some equipment so that we could, well, previously, that we could be indoors and do indoor work over the winter months. And unfortunately, second lockdown happens and we haven't actually been doing anything over the winter, but we'll be back in a couple of weeks time. Um, but we also got funding, part of that funding was to pay for the hire of the facility. So we share with the cricket club, or they own the facility and, and we hire from them. So it was actually able to pay for three months worth of, of um, hire, which was really useful because we're, we're such a small club. So, so that has had a massive impact on us to get that funding. I had some support from the Vale Sports Plan which was the healthy living team in the Vale. Yeah. And they, and they paid for, I didn't have to have a bank account or anything. They give vouchers. Oh, right. So they did, did five lifts, me a surf, five first aiders and five, five of the inclusion mental health awareness training. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So I didn't have to have a bank account. just applied for it. And then they just did vouchers and, and Tom logged everybody on for the, the courses, which was really good. Oh, that's great. Is that Murphy and Vale, is it? No, a Vale of Morgan. I'm a fairly new new club, but I want to keep it quite small. I don't want it getting too big and 
and I just want people on the page that are actually running, not just sitting looking at it and that. So um, it's been really useful. So they're just all coming through qualifying now, two have qualified and the other three are just finishing off. It's a video they can't do with COVID and that. Yeah. Oh, that's really useful, the information. That yeah, is. so anybody in the Vale area here, that, that's, um, that, there's a link there. So if anybody wants to know, let me know. I'll let Sue know for Vale Runners as well, because there's another local club. But yeah, no, they're really, yeah. really helpful. That's great. That's great. And yeah, as I mentioned, please get in, in touch with your local authority sports development department. And if you're not sure how to get in touch with them, um, you can contact us at, at Run Wales or on the Welsh Athletics side. Um, we have club managers in every region. So I cover North East Wales. Barry Edwards covers North West Wales. Um, then we have Hannah Pretty and Tom Cole who cover the South. And then we have Andrew Jenkins who covers the West of Wales so you can get in contact with, with one of them and they'll put you in touch with your local uh, sports development department okay so we've identified a grant that we want to to submit an application for um, definitely make sure that you, you talk to your your leaders and your your group about what you you're applying for and, and what you want to do in terms of, of your group uh, or that might be your committee as well. Um, as mentioned, talk to your Welsh Athletics Club manager because they'll be able to give you some advice and, and we're always keen to support groups in, in whatever way possible. Um, so yeah, let us know. And actually a lot of grants ask, have you been in touch with your national governing body? So either Welsh Athletics or, or Run Wales. Um, and we can, we can support that application. Um, Read the questions and the criteria carefully. I know that that sounds really uh, pedantic. I don't mean it like that. <laughs> um, but make sure you, you read it clearly and, and give full answers. Give as much information as you can. Explain how those funds are going to help your club. How is it going to help the community? Um, how is it going to create the development of others? So are you developing people in, in terms of their coach education or is it about developing the community in terms of access to, to sport? And as James mentioned first thing this morning, you know, walking and, and running has been one of the key activities o over lockdown and, and, you know, the, the amount of people that have been getting out. So we need to make sure that, that we support those people and especially sort of new runners coming in. Um, yeah, link to other documents if you can. So there's a document called Creating an Active Wales. Um, so again, sort of feeding into that you've done your research. Um, how are you going to contribute to creating that Active Wales? Um, explain how you'll benefit particular groups. So for example, women, but is it women in a, a different context so it could be leading women on the trails for example now you've got those, those skills to, to lead women on trails or lead anyone on trails um is it groups from a bme um group how are you going to support people what are the the support needs of of that group um is it people on low income so actually um you're going to support people in a, in a way that they can have access to the, the same um sessions even if if they can't pay for it um also one of the things another thing another project that i'm going to have is is about supporting people with, with uh, sight impairment as well um and how we can how we can do that how we can become guide runners um and how we support those, those individuals so it just all helps to boost your your application um, another thing is, and another thing from, from reading applications is sometimes we'll see this massive figure um, in terms of numbers of, of what people are asking for, and they don't break that down. We don't know exactly what uh, people are paying for. And so if you're asking for three left courses, then put three times left course with uh, the, the cost of that. If it's about equipment, making sure that you have that individual cost some applications if it if it's a big application in terms of numbers will might need three quotes for example but, but that's that's going into the thousands of pounds really okay any questions about 
about the application, writing an application. Ever, I was just going to say, I've, I've just recently done a, a Be Active one that's been approved. And the bit about reading the criteria, like you said, it's really obvious, but you've got this like space where you can write what you want. And it's tempting to just go off on your little like fantasy of what you want the world to be like. But if it doesn't meet the criteria of, um, of why they will give you money, then, uh, you know, it's, it's going to get turned down. So it's just got to really focus in on that criteria. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yes, put in as much detail, but don't don't waffle, <laughs> I think is, is the key. <laughs> OK. Um, Right. Oh, the other thing I was going to say on the, on the back of that, some uh, funds actually require you to write a uh, report following that, that fund. So it could be 12 months later. Um, so make sure that you read those details. What what are they expecting you to give in, in return? Is it a report after that, that 12 months? Is it um, sharing stories? So Sport Wales loved to actually to hear uh, and, and so do we um, about what have you done with the money? How, what has it meant to your group? And, and we can share those, those good news stories, um, especially after all the difficulties that, that we've, we've had over the last 12 months. OK, so a short and sweet presentation, <laughs> but hopefully it's given you some ideas. Has anyone got any questions or any other information that, that they'd like to know about uh, funds and, and grants that I could hopefully help with. Okay. I'm gonna, just going to check the, the chat um, just to make sure I've not missed out anything. Um, Can I ask a quick question, Neva? Yes, of course. Um, obviously, you've highlighted a lot of funding opportunities for things like qualifications and equipment. Are you aware of much funding out there for event resources or something like that. Um, for example, I mean, a lot of social running groups and their members may not have used um, athletics track since they were first, uh, since they were at school. Um, and it might be nice to do something along uh, by taking a group along to a track, but often a lot of the tracks incur a cost because they need to be hired out. Um, whether there was funding opportunities for that yeah, so um, again, it's very much down to um, what you write within your application. But if, if you explain within your application about why you want to do this session, how is it going to benefit your group, um, then the, the cost of hire of facilities can, can be included. Um, I mean, we applied for six months cost of hire. We got three months uh, and that, that was great. So yeah, as long as you, you say what, what is the purpose of it, not just, oh, we, we fancy going to track, but actually it's gonna help with the development of our individuals and our club, then put it in there. Um, so yeah, it, it is worth, it's worth trying. Does that help? Yes, yeah, yeah. I'll have a good <laughs> Yeah, cheers. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that that every single fund will will approve that, but but definitely if you you have it in there, uh, and certainly that goes back to, to planning ahead and, and looking ahead. Um, Tim asking how long does approval usually take for Sport Wales? To be honest, um, it, it depends. If if you put as much information in as possible beforehand and they're not having to come back with you for questions, normally it just takes a, a, a few weeks for that process. Um, what happens is that um, it will go to Sport Wales, but then Sport Wales will get in contact with us and, and just check that through, check that um, I... Uh, I've, I've, uh, Welsh Athletics or Run Wales have been involved in that application um so have you have you had a chat with with us about it and also just making sure that it's a legitimate application as well that it's relevant so so usually just just a few weeks um and then they'll email you back it as in the timeline for receiving that funding with um just trying to think back to with my application for, for the juniors um as soon as i had agreed the offer of the application, 
the funds were in the club bank account within a week to 10 days. It wasn't very long at all. Yeah, we've just been waiting about a month now. So I just querying how long it usually takes. Yeah, so um, it would go to uh, which which club are you with? Pegasus. All oh, right, so it should have gone to to Chris Moss, um, and then Chris would just would just check that over and and um, send that back to Sport Wales. So hopefully, it shouldn't be too much longer. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, have I missed any more questions? Hi, you um you mentioned not to do with funding necessarily, but you mentioned um the um guided runners. Um, are you going to be putting on some courses for that? Yeah, um, what happened was <laughs> we'd arranged all the courses. So the first guide running um, course was meant to be in North Wales um, in March last year. And literally that weekend that the course was going to be on, we went into lockdown. So um, it's very much um, on the plan that that will, um, will come into place. So. Um, I'm not sure whether it will go along the same lines as other courses have been happening where we've had the blended learning. So we've had some online and then obviously we need to do, do some in person when we can. So I'm not sure of the format just yet, but yeah, it's, it's definitely something that, that's on the list. And I'm, I'm working with, with colleagues in that department to, to get up and running. Sure. So yeah, yeah. Thank you. OK. Uh, Mark, did you have a question? Yeah, it was, well, it was more of a point, Eva, really, on the fundraising. We, we're lucky enough, we've got a couple of small business owners within our membership, so we've used them for, you know, sponsoring T-shirts and everything. But something else we did over the last year was members came to us and kind of said, look, I work for a big corporate, and they have often things they, they want to be seen to be doing things in the community. So we had, we were quite successful, actually, last uh, pre-COVID and we're, we're, as a result we've still got the money to pay for uh, a couple of lurfs and um, and uh, there's two of us booked on to surf when it's uh, where curve when it becomes back available and that all came from uh, connections within corporate companies that members just said look my company's kind of asking what do we do in the local community um, and we 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 again applied and were quite successful in that so uh, that's maybe something that might work depends on people's areas it depends on the connections you have but we were quite lucky actually last year with that yeah that's that's great do you know what i'm going to ask you next <laughs> can you do a good news story for me please <laughs> so i can share that with people <laughs> yeah I, 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 i'm not too involved you know on the welfare <laughs> side and the leading side i'm not too involved but i'm i'm fully aware so i'll ask i'll ask joe for some more information and see if i can uh, if I can get it to you. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, if you've got any, sort of, uh, sometimes it's not always the, the bigger companies. I mean, um, we don't have a lot of industry up here in North Wales. We have, I mean, obviously we, we have Airbus and um, we have companies in, in Wrexham, but um, we don't have huge amounts of, of industry. But what we do have, uh, and, and sometimes it is, it is those people that come along to running groups and that you just find out information as you go along and, and find out uh, resources and, and things like that. And, and it's just amazing and, and um, just who is out there and can support you in different ways. Not necessarily always with, with money, but, but also, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Yeah, it was. Information it was, about the group. Yeah, it was interesting. This, this particular instance I'm thinking of, that I knew the detail of actually wasn't on our doorstep it was a couple of miles away but one of our members actually worked for them at a reasonable level so uh, he saw this like on an internal newsletter and just grabbed it but interestingly very much like the be active or the community chest we had to be very specific of what we were going to use the money for we couldn't just have a thousand quid and just say all oh, right we'll do x with it we had to be very um you know we had to say right we're gonna there's four leaders or there's two coaches or there's X kit or there's access to the uh, university running track or whatever. It had to be really, and that money is now, well, in fact, from the committee point of view, they're, they're very um, strong on that money will only be used by for what we've said it'll yeah. be used for. Because obviously during COVID, we could have used it for other things, but 
we haven't. We've been fenced it, and it will only be used for those particular things. Yeah, and I think that's an important point. Um, majority of, of funds, you will have to pick it for what you specifically asked for. Uh, Yes, there's, a, there's two companies that do regular um, asks uh, that community groups can make. Persimmon Homes, if you've got a site nearby you, and AF Blackmore, Blakemore, who I think are concerned with the spa groceries. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, they have regular sort of asks that you can put in for. So if you've got those in your area, worth a go. And, and if you know anybody who works for Admiral, big Admiral, if you're around Cardiff, they have a, a way that staff can nominate a group. Okay, brilliant. Oh, lovely. That's great information, Fiona. Thank you. Um, so what I'll do is, um, as I say, I've got a, um, a list of, of national and sort of local funds that, that might be useful. Um, and if you've got any more, like, like Fiona's just suggested as well, and Mark uh, as well, if you've got any more that you'd be willing to share, then, then it was, it's always useful. Right. Any more questions before I uh, stop recording this section? Sorry, just, just just one thing for me. Yeah. Um, uh, most supermarkets, if you apply to them as well, they will also help the local communities as well. I mean, I, I work for for my local Tesco, and we've had we've had so much from them over the over the last few years. We're all more Phoenix runners I'm with, um, but we've got about at least five supermarkets in the local area who are always willing to help um, local charities and running clubs whatsoever. You know. That's brilliant. Are they still doing the bags for help in Tesco? Ooh, is... I'm not sure. Not sure. I'm not sure. I, I but, don't know whether it every... stopped because of COVID and, and obviously handling all the tokens and, and things. But... Yeah, I'm not sure. But 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 all all supermarket stores, I'm sure, have got a community champion for, for everybody to contact anyway. Okay. I know brilliant. we have. <clears throat> At the co-op, we're doing a regular one as well. And the other the other one I might advise is the Aviva Community Fund. Oh, yeah. Excellent. So this is why these things are so useful, because you pick up all this information. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Um, right, I'm just 